we have the four quadrants and the four quadrants has divided as stars question marks cash cows and dogs if an organization wants to improve its market position in the market then it should always think about having a new product development in other words we should understand that these strategic business units they are a unit by themselves Hello everyone. I'm Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyash from First Rate College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will be having a discussion on what is strategic business units. So this is in continuation of the stages of strategic planning. So in this, we have the strategic business units. So strategic business units has three characteristics. Now, what are the three characteristics of strategic business units? It is a single business or a collection of related businesses that can be planned separately from rest of the company. So a strategic business unit, it can be a single unit or a collection of related businesses so that it can be planned separately from the rest of the company then it has its own set of competitors. So these strategic business units, they have their own set of competitors and it has a manager who is responsible for strategic planning and profit performance. So in other words, we should understand that these strategic business units, they are a unit by themselves. So they have their own strategic planning, they have their own competitors and they are having their own manager who is responsible for the performance of this SBUs as such. So these are the main characteristics of strategic business units. Now, next, the purpose of identifying the company's strategic business unit is to develop separate strategies and assign appropriate funding. So we should have the identification of the strategic business units because we can be able to develop a separate strategy for them and also assign proper budget allocation for these business units. So each of these businesses is termed as portfolios and to analyze the present position and growth potential of these two units, two of the best known business portfolio evaluation models are available. Now we have two portfolio models here and these models are available to evaluate which strategic business unit is doing well. Now, there are two types of models. One is the BCG, that is the BCG model, that is the Boston Consulting Group model and second one is the General Electric model. Now, let us have a look at what is this BCG model. So, the Boston Consulting Group's growth share matrix. So, it is uh, one of the models where we can analyze how the strategic business is doing in the business. So, it involves SBUs being plotted on a matrix according to the rate of market growth and their market share relative to that of the largest competitors. So, we have a matrix here. So, we'll just plot this SBUs and on this matrix in such a way that it is based on the rate of market growth and market share of that relative business unit. So, in this BCG matrix, we can see that this matrix has four quadrants and in this four quadrants the first quadrant is named as the stars. Now in the stars it represents the modest that is positive or negative cash flow. So modest positive or negative cash flow. Modest means very limited. Positive means bit better. Negative means nil cash flow. Then in the second quadrant it is named as the question mark or the problem children. So what do we mean by problem children? Here there is a large neg negative cash flow that is there is no cash flow at all in this kind of a business organization. Then we have the cash cows that is they have a large positive cash flow and then the dogs that is modest or negative cash flow. So this is the matrix here and in this VCG matrix we have the four quadrants and the four quadrants has divided as stars, question marks, cash cows and dogs. So 
this is the relative market share of each of these SPUs and they are to be placed on the basis of the market share and the rate of market growth. Now, let us analyze this. So, the dogs are those businesses that have a weak market share in a low growth market. So, where there is a low growth market, so these dogs can be found and they have a very weak market share. That is, the, these strategic business units, they don't have a good market share in that kind of an environment. Then, question marks are businesses operating in high growth markets, but with a low relative market share. So question marks means the environment is very favorable for the growth of the business, but it is a high growth market, but this business unit, it is not doing well in that particular market. So they have a low relative market share compared to the others. But stars are those products which have moved to the position of leadership in a high growth market. Now we have the stars. These stars are low are those products which have moved to the position of the higher growth. So these are the leaders in the high growth market whereas cash cows are those stars whose rate of market growth begins to fall. Cash cow means a cow which is giving very good cash or it is a business unit which is very very profitable but then they are the those stars whose rate of market growth begins to fall. So once they were in the star group but then once the rate of growth begins to fall they fall down to the cash cow group. So this is how we analyze the SBUs as the stars then we have the problem children and then we have the question mark of the problem children and then we have the cash cows and the dogs. So we have an analysis here. So in essence four strategies can be pursued depending on which quadrant the business unit falls into. So we can pursue four strategies for each of these quadrants. So let us see what are they. So first one is build. So we have a build strategy. Now what is this build strategy used for short term earnings are forsaken for long term returns with an objective to increase the SBU's market share. So in this build strategy the SBU in the SBU it will be a short term earnings they are forsaken. So they don't pay attention for the short term earnings of this but they concentrate on the long term returns of with an objective to increase the SBU's market share. Then second strategy used is hold. So this hold strategy is used for cash cows. So as you all know cash cows are those stars which have fallen to this cash cows because of the declining rate of market share. So with an objective to maintain the correct market share. So cash cows are there so we have to hold on to the cash cows because we can be able to maintain the current market share in the business. Then the third kind of uh, strategy is increase short term cash flows as far as possible even at the expense of the SBU's long term future suited for weak cash cows. So this kind of a harvest kind of approach is utilized here. So what does this harvest tell us? So increase the short term cash flows as far as possible. So on one hand on the build hand what we do we neglect the short term cash flows but in this harvest strategy we are increasing the short term cash flow as far as possible. So even at the expense of the SPU's long term future this is suited for weak cash cows. So for the weak cash cows we can make use of this harvest strategy. The last one is divest. To rid the organization of SBUs 
that act as a drain on the profits. So divest means you just stop investing in those kind of a SBUs or you totally do away with that SBU, sell it off so that you can just have a more profitable organization. So this is usually used for question marks and dogs. So as you all know, the question marks and dogs, they are weak cash flow. They have a very weak cash flow and as such, they will be draining the economy or they are having a negative cash flow means they will be eating up into the resources of the company and as such it is better to divest them or it is better to sell off those strategic business units which are giving negative flow of cash to the organization. Then next model is called as the general electric model. So this model is used to combine a number of factors into a composite value to determine each SBU's strength and weaknesses and to assess environmental factors that represent risk and opportunities. So this model, so in the previous model, it was used to represent the rate of market growth and the market share of the market. Whereas in this GE model, it is used to combine a number of factors into a composite value to determine each SBU strength and weaknesses. So in this model, we will be using a combination of various factors to determine the strength and weaknesses of each SBU and to assess environmental factors that represent the risks and opportunities. So we will be also representing the environmental factors that represent risk and opportunities and here the business matrix is divided into nine cells. In the BCG matrix we saw that the business model was uh, divided into four quadrants but here it is divided into nine quadrants. So here we have the industry alternatives that is the low, medium and high. So low growth, medium growth and high growth. Then we have the business strength here, the strong, medium and the weak. So here in this strong model or where the business strength is high, we invest for growth of the business. Then when the business strength is medium, we make many selectively for earnings. That is investments will be made for selectively for earnings. And in this week one, we either use the harvest technique or we withdraw or we divest. So this is a nine cell based model and in this model we plot the SBUs and depending on their position in the graph or in this matrix or in this grid so we will be using the technique of we will be using different strategies for the different SBUs. So each of these nine cells represents high, medium and low market attractiveness and strong average and weak business strengths. So when, when we have seen that, so we have the grid here. So in this grid, so each of these nine cells represent the high, medium. This is low, medium and the high and then we have the strong and we have the average and the weak kind of a SBUs. So it represents high, medium and low market attractiveness. This is the market attractiveness and here we have the strength of the business. So industry attractiveness can be defined in terms of size and growth potential of the market. So when we have to decide about the attractiveness, industry attractiveness of the SBU, we can say that it can be defined in terms of size and growth potential of the market. So what is the size of the market and what is the growth of the market? Then next one is competitive structure. So what is the competitive structure of the market? Then industry profitability. So industry profitability means how far the industry or the SBU is making profits and then environmental impact. So all these things, based on all these things, we will be plotting the SBUs in this grid. Then the organizational strength is market share and growth rate, 
टेक्नोलॉजिकल पोजिशन इमेज प्राइस कॉम्पिटेटिवनेस प्रोडक्ट क्वालिटी एक्सेट्रा सो वेन वी थिंक अबाउट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रेंथ इट विल बी यूजली इन टर्म्स ऑफ मार्केट शेयर एंड ग्रोथ रेट सो वॉट इज द शेयर ऑफ द एस बी यू इन द मार्केट वॉट इज द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ द एस बी यू वॉट इज द टेक्नोलॉजिकल पोजिशन ऑफ द एस बी यू वॉट इज द इमेज ऑफ द एस बी यू प्राइज कॉम्पिटेटिवस टिटिवनेस प्रोडक्ट क्वालिटी etcetera so all of this we will be taken care of when we impose the sbus in this grid then let us have a look at what are the advantages of the ge screen matrix or the general electric screen matrix so in this the first advantage is to allow sbus to be ranked so in this ge model we can rank the sbus based on their market share based on their price competitiveness based on the product uh, attractiveness etc so next is force the management to consider a wide range of strategically relevant variables so in this ge model we have two advantages that is to allow the sbus to be ranked and second one is force the management to consider a wide range of strategically relevant variables then the advantages of using the ge screen matrix are these two portfolio analysis helps the strategies to analyze to understand the various corporate strategy available to the different sbus and the resource allocation for each of the sbus so with the help of this a ge model the strategists will be able to understand the various corporate strategies available so what are the various corporate strategies available to different sb units and the resource allocation for each of the sbus so they will be able to understand and after the corporate and the business unit strategy the marketing plan which includes marketing our uh, strategy should be developed at the functional level so once the corporate and the business unit strategy are developed by the organization then they have to think about the sbu or the marketing plan which should be developed at the functional level then we go to the stage 4 of the strategic planning process we have the strategic choices now what are the strategic choices so this stage has four steps the product and new product strategies so in stage 4 of the strategic planning we have the product and new product strategies then pricing policies and strategies the promotional plan and lastly the distributional plan so in other words it refers to the four p's of marketing then next one we have the product and new product strategies so in developing a product strategy recognition needs to be given to th three interrelated elements of the product so the product physical attributes including its performance style and quality so when we are thinking about product and new product strategy so we have to think about the physical attributes or the features of the product it is when we think of the features it includes the performance of the product the style and the quality of the product next one is benefits or bundle of satisfaction that it delivers to the buyer so what is the utility of the product to the buyer and the marketing support services such as delivery installation and after sale service so we need to have a marketing support system that is in delivery of the product installation of the product and after sale service of the product then next we have the product and new product strategies so an effective product policy is based on an understanding of the two main concepts the product life cycle and portfolio analysis now in developing a product strategy consideration needs to be given to past performance environmental factors organizational objectives resource available and corporate capability so when we are designing a product policy it should be based on 
two main concepts so what are the two main concepts what is the product life cycle so in which life cycle it is whether it is in the growth stage or whether it is in the decline stage saturation stage or it's in infancy so all these we have to consider and then we have a portfolio analysis so when you are developing a product strategy we need to think of what is the past performance of the product what are the environmental factors, organizational objectives, resources available and corporate capability. Then for an organization intent on improving its position in the marketplace, new product development should be continuously and seriously undertaken. So if an organization wants to improve its market position in the market, then it should always think about having a new product development. Then in majority of the industries, there are two ways in which new products are added. So what are the two ways? So the organization can buy other firms or it can buy a license or a franchise or it can buy patents. So in the acquisition, there are two types in which the uh, products can be purchased. The first one is acquisition. So the organization can buy other firms. So if it has a lot of money, the organization can acquire other firms or it can buy a license or a franchise or it can buy a patent. Then internal new product development can be done in two ways. So what are these ways? That is products developed by in-house R&D, products developed by outside agencies, pricing policies and strategies. Pricing decisions are among the potentially most difficult that marketing managers are required to make. So internal new product development, so it can be done in two ways that is product developed by in-house R&D, products developed by outside agencies, pricing policies and decisions, strategies, pricing decisions are the most difficult to make. So next one is the prices are influenced by significant factors like corporate objectives, competitive stands. So corporate objectives means for whom the corporate is building the product. So for who are the target customers? Second one is competitive stance. So we just base our prices on based on the rival products prices. The nature and structure of competition. So what is the nature and structure of the competition? Then what is the stage of the product life cycle? Customers and negotiations. Then government regulations and industrial consortiums. So all this will be the factors on which the pricing will be decided. Then next, because of its flexibility, the price can be used in a variety of ways such as a tactical weapon, including boosting short term sales and reflecting geographical or segmentation differences. So because of the flexibility, we can always have a price war. So in the short term, if you want to hack more profits, so most of the companies, they resort to price cutting. So they just cut the prices of products in such a way that so anybody who wants to buy, they will go and buy the product. In this way, they can make short run, a uh, short term profits and thereby they will be boosting the short term sales and reflecting geographical or segmentation differences. So all this can be done with the help of price cut. So with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.